Welcome to this product demonstration video where I'll be terminating a shielded Category 5E cable with a shielded Category 5E connector. My name is Ralph Parrott and I am Liberty's Director of Quality and Technical Services and let's get this going. So first thing you want to make sure is you've got the right tools. So you're going to need a crimp tool for the appropriate connector that you're terminating. You want to probably have a, a tweaker, a pair of diagonal flush cutters, and a jacket stripper. So I'll go get started here. We'll move these uh, tools out of the way. I'm going to show you the connector. Liberty sells this kind of as a kit. So we have a connector body, a load bar, and then a, a piece of copper tape and a piece of shrink tubing as part of the kit. This is kind of our best practices field termination kit to get your best strain relief and best ground contact without actually soldering something. So we'll go ahead and get started on this. So first step is going to be to slide the shrink tubing up the cable. So kind of like a boot on a BNC connector. You don't want to forget that because you actually can slip it over the RJ45 if you forget. BNC wouldn't be able to do that. We're we'll going to strip off the jacket about uh, you know, roughly two inches, you know, one and a half to two inches. So I'm going to do a, using the minimum spin on a cigar cutter stripper. I'm going to go ahead and locate it, give it a couple spins around, and then go ahead and pop my jacket off. On a category cable, you're going to have a foil shield. It, the blue is the non-conductive side. That's covered with like polyester, so it doesn't conduct anything. The inside is what's the conductive side. So I want to remove this so it has a seam. So you can find the seam and kind of follow it down. And you can just nip it right at the bottom. Peel it off, and then you have a drain wire. You want to peel that drain wire and just kind of slide it off and fold it back against the jacket. And you can take your piece of copper tape, and you can do it now or you can do it another part in the process if you want, but you can go ahead and anchor that drain wire back down. You want to make sure you can still see a little bit of jacket. You don't want to go all the way to the jacket or else the copper tape can cut into your conductors and cause a problem. Cut off my excess drain wire. Now. Sometimes Category 5 E cables will have a binder and sometimes they won't. This particular one does. I'm going to go ahead and same thing I did with the shield, just nip it at the bottom then off it comes. Of course it's held by static too. Alright, got nice and tight. So now I've got my conductors here. I want to go ahead and uh, untwist these. So there's many ways to untwist pairs. You can probably see many different fields. You can use a piece of your cable jacket, spin it up to do it. You can use your fingers, although it does get kind of hard on your fingers after a while. A lot of folks like to use what they call the tweaker, the basically a screwdriver. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate a few times just to open that pair up, and I'm going to go ahead and pull gently until it separates. And you see it also straightens it. So it does the both. It does the uh, untwisting and straightens at the same time to a certain degree. Go ahead and just go down and untwist all four pairs. You don't want to pull too tight or else you could actually uh, damage the insulation. All right, so I got all my pairs separated. I'm going to put these in the appropriate color code. We're going to do 568B because that is uh, generally the industry standard for data type communications. Then you want to go ahead and kind of straighten these out. Make sure they're really nice and straight. And then where they start to get a little rough here at the edge, you want to go ahead and cut these off nice and flush. You can put your finger over the wires to stop them from flying everywhere. And then take your load bar. It has two sides. One side I call the cavity side. It's open. The other side's a flat across the top. I'm going to use the cavity side and just kind of line this up on the wires. And you just got to give it a little bit of a wiggle and they'll slide down on there. Verify your color code did not change on you. And just slide that low bar up close to the jacket. Now with the connector, you want to do a little preparation here. I'm going to bend this ground bar out of the way so it's a 90 degree angle away. It leaves it open for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. I want about three tenths of an inch between the end of the jacket and the end of the wire. So just about three-tenths of an inch for this connector. Make sure everything's nice and level. You don't want to have any sticking out further than the other. Once you get those in there, you can go ahead and slide this up in and just kind of shove it in there nice and firmly, kind of rock it a little bit, make sure it's seated firmly. And this is where a tool such as a, a, a jeweler's loop like this or a magnifying glass gives you an advantage. You want to look at the front of the connector to make sure you can see copper in all the slots. So I see copper in all the slots, and I also see my conductors are in the right color code order. So everything's ready there for crimping. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my crimp tool, open it up, 
slide the connector in fully seated, make sure it's level and fully seated. Click and hold for a count of one one thousand, then release. Then you can take your ground tab and slide it up and kind of bend these over the copper tape. And now take your, basically your shrink tubing and position it on the back of the connector. What I always do is I position it all the way up to basically that second, uh, right about there, so it's covering that little cavity right there. And then you take your heat gun, and this is a Milwaukee's tool version here. Turn it on, and uh, you want to just apply heat as light as possible to get a full shrink. Don't let the temperature sit on any one part for a long period of time. So now, the one advantage to the 3 to 1 heat shrink that's included in the kit is this gives you better strain relief than any boot. It doesn't give you the snagless option, but it does give you better strain relief. It's a very tight strain relief. Um, it'll stand a lot of flexing, but that's a fully terminated Cat5e shielded connector on Cat5e shielded cable.